Hello, my name is Julius Chetigny, and I am a scientific illustrator and a scientist. And uh, what I do is work closely with other scientists and with museums and book publishers and other groups to create imagery, to paint pictures, to draw pictures, uh, to help promote uh, the knowledge of science and uh, to get people familiar with the natural world. And so one of the things that I do, and which we're going to do today, is lead uh, drawing workshops uh, featuring fascinating kinds of animals and plants around the world. So today, I am going to take us through drawing what's called the leatherback sea turtle, or the leatherback turtle, also called uh, various other names. Um, you can see here that its uh, scientific name, Dermocelles coriacea, uh, means, uh, so Dermocelles is, is, means skin turtle, literally, and coriacea means leathery, so it literally means leathery sea turtle, or sorry, leathery skin turtle. Um, and so we're going to do this uh, using, I'm going to do this using a digital drawing tablet, but you can use a uh, regular paper and pencil. What I would prefer is if you have two colors or two weights or two hardnesses of pencil or a pencil and a pen, you'd use the lighter one first, a lighter color or lighter weight. Uh, and then we're going to do a bunch of guidelines to help us to kind of establish the proportions of the animal. And then uh, I'm going to do that in, in red color. And then I'm going to switch to black, and at that point, I'd like you to switch to your darker color or heavier lines or something to make it more visible. The best is if you use a pencil for the guidelines and then a pen for the details afterwards so that you can erase out the guidelines while keeping the final details in place. Um, so there's a variety of possibilities. So let's get started on this. So the leatherback sea turtle is a fascinating animal. And it is uh, the biggest sea turtle. Uh, there are seven species of sea turtles. Uh, this one grows up to over two meters long. In some cases, it's huge. It's a really neat looking animal. So to start, I'd like you to take your page, and I've set this up to be about eight and a half by 11 inches. Um, make sort of a diagonal line across it. If you have a ruler, that might help. If not, that's okay too. Just make it as straight as you can. We're going to start at one end here. So about one third of the way down. So if you go to the top of your page, if it's put sideways and you just make little, uh, you know, little markings here about one third of the way. And then on the other side, about you know, one third of the way, uh, close to one third. Make a diagonal line like this. Just lightly. You don't have to make it too dark. This is just going to help us to set up where to put the turtle and where to put the other lines, okay? So that's the first step. Now, uh, that's going to help us to put the body, to place the, the animal's main body, sort of. A, we want to put it in the center of the page, or just a little bit to the left. What I'd like you to do is draw kind of an egg shape, or an oval, uh, that is a little bit tilted to the right, along that line that we just drew. So we'll go like this. See where I start? Make an oval shape like this. Oops, that was a little bit too wide on that end. I got it too big. Let me set up some shapes that kind of help guide us along. Go like that, about like that size. So it's about maybe a little less than a third of the width of the page, something like that. No, it doesn't matter if it's exactly precise. The main thing is that the other shapes you get are about the right size compared to this one. That's the most important thing. Okay, so that's going to be where the turtle's body is. Now we're going to set up sort of like the collar area around the base of its neck. This is going to make the shape look a little bit like an olive. So you take the end of your of this oval you drew and you make sort of an egg shape, a small one, smaller one at the end like this. So it's another oval, basically right at the end of that big one. So you see what I mean? It kind of looks a little bit like an all like a pitted olive, and but that's that's just the first stage. Uh, now we're gonna add uh, a head. So that was where the neck will come out of the turtle's kind of shell or carapace or uh, the, yeah, all well, these guys are a little bit different that way from other sea turtles. I'll explain that in a second. So the head is going to be another oval, a little bit shorter oval, close to the same size as that last small one. We're going to go near the middle of that other oval, just a little to the left, and start drawing like this. 
So the main thing is pay attention to where these shapes are relative to each other. So in other words, you want them to overlap in the same ways that I've got them overlapping here. That's important because it's going to help us to, uh, to guide us to where to put the details later. So now we're going to make another long oval this time. You're going to go to where the right to the center of this head that you drew, the, this head oval, and make an oval that looks like this. It's, it's a long skinny one going upward like that. That, and it comes back down like this. So you don't even have to complete it all the way. That represents one of the flippers, the front flippers or front legs of the turtle. That looks really weird for a sea turtle, right? Or for a turtle in general. Well, these guys have enormously long flippers. They're beautiful, also nicely colored and patterned, but they have very long flippers. And the importance of that is that it allows them to swim very quickly. In fact, this turtle, among the something like there are more than 300 species of turtles or types of turtles in the world, this one is the fastest, fastest swimming turtle of all. It uh, has been recorded swimming something like 30 to 35 kilometers per hour in some cases. Most of the time it's less than that, but that's really fast. That's like how fast your car can go in a school zone at, at, at fastest. That's pretty wild. <laughs> so uh, these guys can really swim fast. So now, so that's the flipper on the other side of the turtle. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but just bear with me because these are only the guidelines to help us set up the proportions. Now there's going to be a sort of another oval about the same size as the head oval and pretty much the same shape too. It's going to be touching the collar that we drew in. It goes like this. So go left of that, that oval that we drew that represents the collar or where the sort of the hole in the, in the shell of the turtle. Okay, so that's going to represent where the shoulder of the animal's right leg is. The long skinny flipper or leg we drew before was its left front leg. This one is going to be where the right front leg is. And then we'll just draw in the guide for that right front leg. And this is going to be kind of like a long sort of needle like shape with a rounded end. It's going to be in the start in the middle of or around the middle of that oval we last drew. And it goes like this. Start it there and then curve backward and slightly upward and through all the shapes and you'll end up along that diagonal line up there and you'll turn back, head back towards this sh oops, shoulder area like this. Sorry, I just made that a little bit off. I'm going to correct that like this. And we'll finish the shape like that. So it's a long skinny shape. Now you can see that, so that's going to represent the right flipper, but you can see it looks very different in shape than the left flipper that we drew. Uh, the reason for that is because this turtle is swimming and it flaps its flippers like wings to propel it forward. And this one has its flippers or wings sort of pointed upward. So it's like in that part of the, the, the flapping cycle when its flippers are up. But one of them, the one that we just drew is facing us edge on sort of like if you look at your hand um, along the edge of the, your hand it's very narrow looking but if you look at your hand from above uh, like that other flipper we're seeing you can see it much wider so, so the angle is different on these two flippers Ooh, that's why they look different so we're going to put in the hind right flipper as well we can't see the left one on the hind the hind right foot uh, hind, hind left foot but we can see the hind right one it looks like this basically a, a triangle like shape starting here and then a little bit curved back like that so we can see this one on the right side of the animal because uh it's it's in in view but the, the left one is not visible because it's hidden behind the animal's body and i should say too that the animal that we're drawing here is not uh seen right from the side it's kind of coming toward us. It's, it's moving towards the right and toward us. It's, uh, sort of an oblique angle, as we call it. And so it just makes it more interesting to see, I think, this way, rather than just from the side. Uh, and it also helps us to see better the face. And that's going to be important because of the, the features on the head. 
Okay. So now the the big circle, the big uh, sort of oval that we drew initially, the biggest one, is, as I said, kind of the turtle's body, the part that's covered by that shell. But the end of it, we can see, still see a little bit of the, the tip and the far end uh, at the, near the tail. It narrows and it's sort of teardrop shaped. So in other words, if I were to draw this shell from above um, and pointing to the right, don't you don't have to do this. I'm just going to do this so that you can see what I mean. And it would look something like this. It's kind of teardrop shaped like that with it a sort of a tip at the tail. Maybe it goes even a little bit wider than that. Like that. Okay, so there's the front end of the turtle is over here, and it, it moves in this direction. The head would be like that, sort of. Uh, and then these flippers that we drew are about here. So just to give you an idea of the overall shape of the animal that we're drawing, it kind of looks something like this. That's the head eyes are on the side. Um, that just helps us to guide us what it'll look like if it were seen right from above. Okay, so we're going to put that little tip, this little, this little bit of the end of the shell here, it kind of, it kind of narrows. And so that's what's going to be here. If you look at the back end of that big oval we drew, it's just a little bit of a tip like that. We can still see that from our angle, but only a little bit. Okay, so now we have the head, we want to put the mouth in place. And to do that, go to that oval that you drew for the head, and you start where the front flipper intersects it, and you make this kind of a, eh, kind of a curved shape with a hook in it, like that. You know, it looks like it's smiling, actually. Um, that's the shape of the beak that we're seeing. The beak has that kind of an odd shape. Okay? So now we're also going to want to show that it has a certain width. Now, we're not seeing the head from, right from the side, as I said, it's pointed a little bit toward us. And in order for us to see that, for it to make to make that clear, we're going to be able to show that the mouth is, we can see the other side of the mouth as well. Okay, so here's what happens. So start at the, again, at the top of the mouth where you started the other one, and you're going to make a small curved line like this. It ends there because that is the other margin of the mouth, the left margin of the mouth. Uh, what you see here now, this tip here is the top of the beak, and this is the bottom of the beak. When you're finished, this line is actually going to be erased out. That's just a connector to guide us initially, but the beak is actually there, and the bottom part of the beak is there. Okay. Don't need these arrows here now. Okay, so that's where the mouth will be. It's a guide shape still. The eye of the animal uh, is conveniently along one of the lines that we drew, the line that uh, describes the body of the turtle. That's going to be erased out afterwards, but it helps to place the eye, and it goes right here. It's a small oval like this. Okay, that's where the eye will go. There's no details on it yet. Now, the other thing about this turtle is that it's its carapace or its its shell has ridges on it. Now, if you go back to this picture I drew on top here of the turtle from above, um, actually it kind of comes like this. There's that the gap, the collar that we drew. There are several ridges. There are seven ridges in total. You don't have to draw this. I'm just going to draw it to show you. There's one on the top, down the center. Um, I'm just going to erase this out here just to make it clearer. Actually, no. We want to leave that. That's okay. There's one on top. Then there's another one here on both sides. And this is the one I wanted to leave there initially. This is a third one. Or, or sorry, a, yeah, second set on the sides. And then there's one more that you, can, you can't see here because it's right along the edge of the carapace. So there are seven. There's one, two, three, four, and then on the bottom, five, six, seven. Seven ridges that travel from the front to the back end of the turtle. And what we see, how we see these look on the animal uh, in, from the angle that we're seeing it at in the big picture is like this. You start at the top of that collar oval and you go back like this and it merges with the body. We're seeing it, as I said, from not the side, but from partly from the front and a little bit halfway from the front, halfway from the side. So that top ridge 
and it disappears behind the turtle uh, after it starts the front there. Okay, that's this uh, central ridge up here. And then another ridge, uh, we're going to draw this one here. It's going to start here and curves back along the back of the turtle and ends up there. And so that's one of the side ridges. The one corresponding to that on the other side of the turtle, on the turtle's left side, starts here, just behind where the eye is on the body, and just, you can only see a little bit of it. So it's a little curve like that, because it mostly disappears behind the body of the turtle. The next ridge starts here at the shoulder, and goes back like this, a little curved. Now we can't see the corresponding one to that on the other side, okay, because it's behind the body of the turtle. It would start out close to where the eye is, but it's you can't see that because it's behind the animal. And then there is yet another ridge that we can just see on our side. Um, and that one is found down here. And you can just see that just below the right front flipper of the turtle. You can't see it on the other side, again, because it's behind the animal's body. Okay, so that um, helps us to uh, show where the ridges are. And now we have most of what we need in the guide shapes to help us put the details in place for this turtle. So one of the things I wanted to mention about this animal is the this shell that we're looking at here. You know, it looks kind of funny, but what's really neat about it is that it's different from all other sea turtles, from the six other sea turtles, uh, in a pretty major way. Now this turtle, the leatherback, is in its own family, uh, and the, all the other six sea turtles are in their own family. So it's quite a bit less related to them than they are to each other. And what's really neat about the shell of this animal is that unlike those other six species of sea turtles, it doesn't have a shell that's composed of large pieces of sort of like bone put together. Instead, it has like hundreds of small little scutes or little, little pieces of bone that kind of fit together like a puzzle that form the shell. Um, and so it, it's, it's made up very differently from those guys. And these ridges along the back are also very different. And the biggest difference that you see when you see a living animal is that unlike those other ones where the, the shells are all um, are all hard on the outside and, and it looks like bone, this one is covered with soft skin and leathery kind of skin. And so it actually, just like the, the name says, the leather back, it has a soft looking shell. Okay, so that's a big difference between this one and the other sea turtles. Um, okay, and it's and it's bigger too, right? It's it's the biggest one of all of the living species. So this is a really neat one, and it's one of the species that we have here in Canada on both the west and east coasts, and um, it's endangered. Well, the the species as a whole is vulnerable. It's listed as vulnerable by the uh, International Union for the Conservation of uh, of Nature. But the, there are several populations of this animal, and one of them that lives in the Pacific Ocean is actually critically endangered. There's about, yeah, close to about 30,000 females maybe in the world, but the population in the, in the Pacific, um, the ones that we have on our shores in Vancouver, there are only about 2,600 of them or so. So they're actually uh, listed as critically endangered. So we have to be very, very careful to uh, not harm them. And Canada has laws that protect them. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'm going to shift over to a black color. And we're going to start putting the details into the turtle. Okay? So I'd like you now to change from your either your lighter color or your lighter uh, toned pencil to a heavier one or a darker color. Or if you have ink, you know, a pen, use that. Um, that's going to make it easier. So I'm going to just switch this over here. switch over to a different layer. Okay, so we are ready now. We have all of the shapes. 
in place. And now we can put the details of the turtle in place. Now it's going to look actually like a real living turtle if we get this right. So, um, first thing that I would like you to do with this darker color is trace out basically the body, kind of like you did before. So there's a little bit of a difference here than what we set up, and I want you to pay attention to this. Mostly it's similar, but so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start near the, the neck area, near that collar, and we're going to trace it along like this. But you'll kind of pull away a little bit, a little bit of indentation there. And then we'll continue along the line that we had before, all the way out here to the back to where that flipper goes. And we'll stop at the flipper because we don't want to draw over the flipper. The flipper's in front of the body. We'll continue on the other side of that flipper and go here. Now you'll continue to the back, that little bulge in the, in the shell, and then smoothly continue along the back of the turtle up here. Sorry about that. But now when we get to the top here, along this ridge, you're going to make another wee bit of an indentation here, a little bit of a dent, and then continue along to that next ridge, and then another wee bit of an indentation here where you hit the head. You end up at the head like that. It's the reason I, we did that. Because these ridges that we drew here aren't just lines on the, on the shell of the turtle. They're actually ridges. They stick out. Um, and the shell around them indents. So in other words, if you were to draw a line, like if I were to go to, to the top image here, and if I were to draw a line like this across the turtle with, let's say, just like that, if we were to show that line on this, this bigger picture we're drawing down here, it would look something like this, a dotted line. That goes up. And there's this dent, goes up, meets the, the ridge, and then it goes back down, back up to the ridge, and then again, and back down a little bit, not as deeply here, and up to this next ridge, and then a little bit down, um, and then we're behind the flipper, and then goes up like that. So you can see that this shell actually has this kind of indentation between the ridges a little bit. It's a very complex shape. It's very interesting looking. So that's why we drew these, this dent here and here. Now down here, this dent um, just has to do with the overall shape of the shell and has not because of the ridges, but we needed that as well. Okay, so that helps to give us the overall shape of the carapace. In turtles, that shell is called the carapace. Uh, now we're going to draw sort of the front margin of this carapace. Now, there's, um, there's an interesting thing that happens here. We drew this circle or this oval to represent the shoulder of the animal. But there's another thing that's happening. The, the, the carapace or shell actually ends at the front and doesn't go all the way to the head. We're going to draw that outline where it ends. We're going to start at the very top, at the top of the head, and come back this way along that, that um, collar that we drew. And we're going to come back down here. And when we, find, when we hit this diagonal, and then the, that shoulder oval will go back along that shoulder oval like this. Stop at the, at the flipper because we don't want to draw over the flipper. And we'll continue down here and go forward like this. And notice I haven't touched the very bottom of the shell yet, but right here it does. Okay, actually just like that. And the reason is because all of this back here is, is the shell or carapace. But here, this is all soft, fleshy area. So where the flipper and shoulder are on our side, that's all soft and fleshy. And then the neck area and then the head is hard, but it's, it's not the shell. So that helps us to define where the shell ends, actually. Now, we're going to do the flippers. Now, pay attention to this. This flipper on the far side of the turtle, the turtle's left flipper, um, has a shape that's a little bit different from what we drew. And so we're going to use that shape to guide us, but we're going to also move a little bit away from it here and there. So we'll start at the corner of the mouth of the turtle, like this. And it, it, there's a bit of an indentation away from that oval. And we'll continue back up along it, and then we trace along the oval here. Then it separates a little bit, and it gets narrower. See, like this, than what we drew. And there's a little bit of a tip, not too sharp, but sharper than we drew initially. Now, as you go along the back end of this flipper, you can add a 
few little notches like that. Not many, just a few. Because over time, they get worn, get a little damaged maybe, a little nicks here and there, and all that. And then finish it by hitting, ending up back at the top of the head like that. So that is the shape of the animal's uh, left flipper. Now we're going to do the right flipper, the right front flipper. So these are the, the front flippers. So we're going to start at the top of that right uh, front flipper. And we're going to basically just follow the shape that we drew in this case. What we drew is pretty much the shape we want, like this. So I kind of separated a little bit away from it, but that's okay. It's close. Uh, and it's narrow, right? Because we're seeing it edge on. Oops, that was a little bit too narrow there. That looks a little bit rough. <laughs> I'm just going to go and fix that like this. Now you can sketch. That's okay. It's not perfect. Now finish back up here. And then you make a little bit of a dotted line along the front end because it doesn't really, there's no big crease there. It's just, you can see a little bit. But in fact, you can add a few wrinkles in the skin like this because this soft area here does a lot of flexing. This turtle uses its flippers to swim, right? Uses them like paddles, almost like the wings of a bird. And so they flap up and down and sort of forward and backward a bit. And so that skin around it becomes very wrinkled. Okay, so we have that. Lots of action happening. You can even draw a little bit of a, a few little lines in the front here just to show that there's a little bit of wear and tear on the front edge of the flipper. That's the front edge. We're seeing it edge on. Okay, so that's basically the right front flipper. Now, there's one more flipper, right? Yeah, I'm calling these flippers. They're really legs, but they're, they function the same way as, as the flippers of, uh, of uh, whales or dolphins, um, and so they're often called flippers. So this back one here is very similar on the front edge as what we drew. But when we get to the back edge, I want you to pay attention to something. There's going to be sort of three little lobes. One, two, three. And these represent kind of the toes of the animal. In fact, you can even put little dotted lines between them, just dotted, because they're not really separated. But there's a bit of a waviness to the back. So if I were to draw that on this top image here, you don't have to follow along, but just watch what happens. One, two, three. So there's basically like three little bumps visible where the toes are there are no claws on them so this animal has evolved um, the loss of its claws and, and separate fingers it doesn't need them when it swims and so all that's left here on the back flipper is just these little bumps along the back edge there's no claws on them anymore no separate fingers now we're going to go to the head of the animal and add some details there <clears throat> now for the head, I'd like you to pay attention to uh, a big difference from, a sort of a difference from what we drew. Um, most of it follows pretty much in that sort of uh, oval that we drew. But there's one thing that's different, and I'll start with that so that it's clear. At the front end of the beak, we won't go right to the tip that we drew. Instead, we come down like this. You see how it kind of is a little bit blunter? But we're going to continue with the top of the head pretty much like we drew before. But you're not going to finish it all the way back. You just kind of end it about there. And then uh, at the bottom beak, it's going to be a little bit different again. And that's going to look like this. There's going to be a little bit of a, a tip to the beak that goes upward from the end. But we do go to the end of this one otherwise. And we'll continue and finish off the bottom jaw kind of like this. Okay. And again, the dotted lines back here, we're not, there's no sharp line um, showing us the edge of the, the back of the head. So it's just a dotted line. Now, what we're going to do is add the margin of the mouth. And here's where it gets really interesting. Um, the margin of the mouth is, um, is neat because they don't have teeth. So these animals, uh, they eat almost exclusively jellyfish, so really soft animals. 
And because of that, jellyfish don't aren't really chewy. They don't need to be chewed. They need to be caught and held um, securely, but they don't need to be chewed. So what these animals have are really neat evolutionary adaptations to catching a jellyfish and holding it so it doesn't escape instead of chewing it. The front edge of the beak is like this. So the, remember we drew that, that bottom beak coming upward? Well, I'll zoom in a little bit actually just to show you more clearly. That, that bottom of the beak here comes upward and then the mouth comes back pretty much along the line that we drew. And then the top jaw ends actually a little bit further out here and then it comes up like this. But when we get toward the front, Here's what happens. Watch closely. There's a series of these little, it's kind of like a, almost like teeth. They look like teeth, but they're really just kind of the edge of the, of the um, beak is, uh, has these, these sort of notches and points. So when the turtle closes its mouth, and here's the, the other end of the, the other margin of the mouth, the other side. There. So that's the mouth completely. When the turtle closes its mouth, this bottom beak tip fits into the notch on the front of this, uh, of the, the upper beak. And the, the midline of the head is right here. It goes up like that. Well, actually, it goes up like this more. That's the tip. There's a notch here, and then there's these two uh, additional sort of like teeth almost, and so they just lock together. And then that can help capture the jellyfish. That's really, really interesting that way. Um, what else it has is that inside of the mouth, there are these really neat little spines. So it, again, has no teeth inside, but what it does have are these kind of sort of almost softish looking spines. You can just draw this jagged edge like this. They're pointing inward. That's on the opposite side of the mouth. On our side, there are some as well. And they look like teeth here. They're not. They're all pointing inward. We're only seeing them from behind. So you can only see a little bit on our side of the mouth. Then if you were to look inside of the mouth, and this is another reason I wanted to draw the mouth open, you can see on the other side of the mouth on top, there are a few of these weird little spines as well. If you ever have a chance to look inside the mouth or take a, see a photo of the mouth of a leatherback turtle open, it's amazing. It, it looks like I mean, if you've ever seen the movie um, Star Wars, uh, one of the older ones, um, and I think it's actually Return of um, Empire Strikes Back, you'll see that there's this scene with the Sarlacc, which is an alien creature that has a mouth that looks like this. It's amazing to see all of these spines. The reason for the spines is that if the jellyfish is, is managed to get into the mouth of the turtle, if it manages to get the jellyfish in, these spines hold it in place, and actually, if anything happens, they push it backward into the mouth, into the throat. The throat is lined with these spines, too. It's the neatest thing. So that's the mouth of, of a sea turtle, um, of this particular kind of sea turtle. Really, really interesting looking. Okay, so now the neck. There's a reason why we didn't connect these lines down here. It's because the neck of the turtle, and actually I kind of drew a little bit too long there. The neck of the turtle is pretty big in this case. When its mouth is open, you know, just continue like this from the bottom of the chin all the way down here to where the carapace begins. And then the top here, it, it well, sorry, it really is, you, you, you can barely see the edge of it actually like that. We pretty much drew in what we need. But here's the thing, that the bottom of the jaw of the animal is here. You can draw this little dotted line. And so that's the actual bottom of the jaw. And then, kind of like, you know how we drew those um, wrinkles at the shoulder? Well, we'll do a similar thing here with the neck. Draw a bunch of like dotted lines or partial lines like this. These Lots of these wrinkly lines along the neck, the top. And this will help us to sort of define the overall shape of the neck too. You see how it's curved like this? You can see the curvature by the way that we drew these, draw these lines. Just a bunch of lines like this. This is all softish. And you can actually just kind of line them up like that, merge them with the lines around the shoulder. All this area is softish neck, like that. Okay. So now the turtle needs an eye and a nostril. Now here's the neat thing. So 
Remember I mentioned that the, this is the tip of the, the head um, right there. That's the center line, that little dotted line. The nostrils are here as one. And then the other one is just visible because again, we're seeing it partially from the front and partially from the side. The eye is interesting. That oval we drew before kind of defines, we'll make a dotted line along that. That defines kind of where the eye socket is. But the actual eyelid of the turtle is, whoops, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. It kind of made a big thick line there I didn't want. The eye lid of the turtle is slanted forward like this. So you make sort of a lemon shape. It's really slanted forward a lot. Um, and then the actual eye, like the iris or the pupil and stuff are down inside there. So it, it's really weird how it's slanted like that. Um, very, very much for, for a lot of um, turtles. And turtles sometimes have this as well, but this one has it a lot. You can also make a little bit of a dotted line up here and a little bit down here. So there's the, the eyes and the nostril of the turtle. We don't need this uh, arrow anymore. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out now. So we can see the whole animal. And now we're going to put those ridges in place on the shell. So Remember I mentioned that these all kind of, these ridges, they kind of stick out a bit. But in addition to that, they have kind of these little bumps on them. So I'm going to start, you see here on top, on the center ridge, I'm starting to draw these kinds of bumps. Almost, it looks almost like a chain. And you can actually go a little bit out beyond the edge of the shell here to show that these bumps, this kind of ridge, it's, it's a rough kind of a ridge stick out from the turtle's shell, like that. And then on the um, the other ridges, you can do the same thing. So in this next one here, again, they don't have to be all the same size, these bumps, some smaller, some larger, a little bit of irregularity, but you know, you can represent them by these kind of little oval-like things, because we're, we're seeing these ones now partly from above, right? Because the shell is curved and, it, and we're looking more down on this part of the shell. And then the one coming out from the shoulder here, similarly, that was a bit of a thick line there. You can make these little bumps like that. And a bunch of ovals, that works, and dots. And then remember there was this one, actually there's two others left, right? There's one under the flipper here. Not as big bumps here, it's smaller a little bit on the side. They're, they're much more, are less visible than the, the, the biggest ones are on top. And there's one more ridge visible, right? The one that's on this side, on the le animal's left side, near the top, near the center, but the one just to the left of center, again, a few more bumps. And you can see some of these along the edge, Maybe not quite that tall. This, as they go back toward the animal's back, like that. So that's the, the, um, the bumps along those ridges. And also, um, remember, you know, we've already drawn in some of this kind of, you don't have to put these lines in here, but these just kind of help to show us the overall shape of the shell. One of the neat things that we do have actually on the animal is that in addition to the shell, there are, in some of the older animals, especially some life forms that grow on them. So if you go on the seashore, you'll find these, these shell covered, Arthropods actually uh, related to insects and lobsters, but they're not actually. They're called barnacles. Barnacles are these these shelled like creatures that that, that cement themselves to rock and grow, uh, and then they filter out materials from the seawater. And their shells look they kind of look ovally or round. I'm gonna zoom in here, and they kind of they grow on the shell of the turtle. They grow on rocks and other hard surfaces. I'm drawing a little stuff in the middle of them because technically, actually, that's where there's, there's a part that kind of comes out and they have little tentacles that they use to filter the water, uh, to filter food out of the water. But most of the time, they're just kind of sitting there with their shells in place, hiding the tentacles. But you can just draw a bunch of ovals. And so these represent the 
barnacles that are growing on this animal. Now, there are very different numbers of barnacles in different animals. Some of them have lots, some of them have few barnacles. They're pretty small, right? So just, you know, you just put a few here and there. And I'm paying attention to putting them at an angle uh, that makes sense with respect to the uh, shell, the way that it, it curves. But you know what? It's okay, however you make them, if they're little circles, no matter where, that's fine. Anywhere along the back, so something like that. Okay? So this kind of would be maybe an older animal, because it's had a lot of time for these barnacles to grow. Okay, so now we have our turtle basically um, fully defined, and now you can um, erase out some of these guidelines if you have it in pencil, the red ones on my uh, in, in on my drawing. Uh, for me, I can actually uh, reduce the brightness of the, those lines, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to take that and uh, reduce that so that you can see the turtle details that we drew, okay? So that's most of it. There's one other thing that I didn't mention. There's actually two interesting things here. One of them is the color patterns of the turtle. So this animal is mostly dark gray, maybe a little bit greenish, um, but it also has um, these little spots, speckles of white all over it. So this is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the barnacle spots, but these are different. These are actual spots of, of color now. What you can do is use a different color. So I'm going to switch to white, actually, and I'm going to make these in a different color just so that it's clear to you what's happening. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to change my color to white and then just put a bunch of them to show you where they are. Head. Sometimes there's uh, white. There's, there's white along the edge of the mouth too. Sometimes, and there's little speckles all over its head and its flippers and the back. You got barnacles and you got spots and speckles of white. The white is actually part of the animal's natural color. The barnacles are are also uh, white in color but you can see them sticking out from the animal when you see an animal, actually. In addition, there's more white underneath the animal on the bottom side. There's a reason for that. That animals that have lighter color on the underside have this condition called countershading. Um, basically, the lighter color helps to cancel out some of the shadow that they cast on their own body. And that makes them less visible in the water um, or on land if they're on land. That helps them to evade predators. Predators have a harder time seeing them. So it's a defensive strategy. Predators also have this so that their prey don't see them as easily, so they can sneak up on them more effectively. Okay, so there's the animal. Now there's another thing that we want to add here. Let's switch back to black here. So this animal um, eats, as I mentioned, jellyfish, almost exclusively jellyfish. So we're going to put a jellyfish in front of it. We just do a line like this, sort of a curved partial oval. And then the edge is almost like a crescent, but with like a, a scalloped edge or kind of a wavy margin to the edge. That's the, what's called the bell of the jellyfish. That's the big round part. Uh, this jellyfish, uh, then we have like sort of like a another part that comes down from the bell like this. And then it's the base of the arms, and the arms kind of come out. And this is one of those, those, those weird looking jellyfish, sort of like lion's mane jellyfish. And that's one of the jellyfish that we have around here in BC. The lion's mane jellyfish is a huge jellyfish. It's one of the, it may be the biggest one actually in the world. 
Um, I've seen one. They're beautiful. They're orange in color. This one is, is maybe related to one. It's not exactly, but it's close. So this is a weird looking jellyfish and that turtle's about to eat that. Now here's where it gets um, interesting. Well, here, here's where it gets dangerous for turtles. Uh, there are two things that threaten them very heavily, this particular kind of turtle. One is entanglement in, in fishing gear. Okay, so one of the things we can do to help these turtles, to help protect them, is to try to, when we're buying fish, if we do eat fish, try to make sure you buy it from a source where the fishing is done responsibly so that nets are not left drifting after they're used, they aren't thrown away into the water, um, because that can entangle wildlife like sea turtles, um, or where they take care to make sure that the animals that they're not after aren't entangled in their nets and that they don't die in the process. Okay? So that's one thing you can do to watch to make sure, ask to see how, how the fishing is done. Is it responsible or not? Um, there are organizations that help to, uh, to kind of uh, regulate this. The other things that we can do is to really watch to avoid using uh, single-use disposable plastics because a bag in the water can look a lot like a jellyfish. Okay? So if we were to draw a plastic bag floating in the water, maybe it looks like this. It's like all over, right? It's, it's all wrinkled up and folded around. It doesn't look much like a plastic bag. What to a turtle, what it does look a lot like is a jellyfish. And so these turtles actually hunt the jellyfish. They don't, act, they don't just passively filter them out. They, they hunt them down and they grab them and they pull them out of the water and swallow them. And their, those, those spines in the mouth make that jellyfish or the bag go down pretty effectively. It can't get rid of it very easily. So, you know, you can see that bag looks a little bit like a jellyfish to us. Maybe we can tell the difference. The turtle can't necessarily. And so it's been found that about one in every three of these turtles has eaten bags. The problem is that once the bag is inside, that can kind of make the turtle starve because it doesn't, it gets in the way of other food being in its stomach. So that's a major reason why these turtles can actually die is that they have, they accidentally eat these plastic bags that look like jellyfish. So we need to avoid using and throwing away these bags. And then you can also help by taking part in shoreline cleanups that remove plastic bags from shores where maybe the tide can pick it up and, and pull it into the ocean. So these are things we can do to help protect these wonderful animals. And so now you've been able to draw a, a leather bag sea turtle uh, and its prey and I uh, hope you had some fun and uh, thank you very much for drawing with me.